But then finally, also from a tactics perspective, I think ta- I think Nick, even to this day, is one of the best tacticians in running. Um, I don't think he's the best physiological specimen in the world by far. Yet he's ran incredibly fast, and he has two Olympic medals uh, to his name. Uh, uh, and that that attitude was also polar opposite to my running attitude when I first started, which was the, which was the prefontaine approach, you know, like run, there's only one way to win. And that's from the front. Nick, Nick didn't care how fast he ran. He just had to win. And mm. a couple things he always did with that. I, I like, I still apply to, uh, to this day are um, he'd always hug the rail and you, you don't hug the mm. rail in cycling, but he, you watch his, a lot of video and he never gets off the rail. And he'd tell you this, like they measured the track, I think it's like 15 centimeters out from the rail. And so if you run on the rail, you're going to run a bit shorter than 400 meters per lap. And uh, he'd stick to the rail no matter what. Guys would be fighting all around him and he'd just stay on it. That's what, And it's, it led to a couple of instances where he'd, he'd knock someone over or fall himself. But on, on the majority of the time, he'd run this perfectly efficient race. And the confidence that you'd have to have would be, he'd always he'd always say to you it always opens up, and I I I, I took me this I, I rarely had the confidence to sit on the rail and wait for it to open up. I panic, and if you panic, that whole the whole advantage that you had of run, running on the rail is lost because uh, then you have to run around five guys, you have to push your way out, you spend too much energy, you, you waste too many bullets, especially in your fifteen hundred because you only have you know really one one acceleration after your after your, your start. Um, but he'd say, just always open up and it would, you watch most of his videos. He sits on the rail, sits on the rail, sits on the rail. And then finally in the last like 150 meters, hundred meters, miraculously, it would just always open up and he'd pull through. That's how he got his medal in, in Rio. Uh, that's how he's got, yeah, that's how he's won a lot of races. And it's something that I apply in my, in my bike racing, because in a bike race, you're making, it's very similar to that really tactical, high level 1500 meter uh, championship event where there's no rabbit. Uh, there are a lot of bodies around you all the time, always moving. And if you lose your head, uh, for me particularly, um, there's this, sorry, it, 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 there, there's always this battle going into a, a big climb and there's bodies around you and everyone's fighting. And if you lose your head, you can end up at the back of the Peloton, which is 180 guys. And then mm-hmm. you end up on, on this feature, on this climb that's super narrow, and there's no way you're going to make it around everybody to be in the front group, uh, no matter how strong you are. It's, it's, the race is basically over. And so now, um, during that battle for position, I, always, like, I, I still always tell myself, it's going to open up. It always opens up. And, and I just wait and I'm patient, and, and it does. That's if I have the head. If I don't have the head, then uh, I'm not right. back again. <laughs> that's interesting. I mean, and, and it's almost like... You, it, I, just hearing you describe it where it's like, man, I, if I rush, you know, if I, if I was impatient, I would try to get out. It's almost like Nick is the one guy who just stays patient and lets everyone else brain scatter and they all start flailing out, right? It takes an, an, an obscene amount of confidence. The first time I saw him really do it, actually, <laughs> uh, uh, I remember watching him do the heats at the Big Ten Championships in 2005 indoors. And he... Uh, I think it was 2005. Anyways, in the heats, he just told me before the start, like right before the start of the heat, he's like, I'm not going to, I'm going to sit dead last on the rail all the way until <laughs> 700 meters to go. And I was like, you're crazy, man. That's like, that's like way too long. Cause like the, the disparity in a, at a big 10 championships is massive. If you're sitting last, like you're really running a risk. And he just sat there and every lap would come by and wink at me or smile. And then finally, like <laughs> he just sat there, guys were fighting all in front of him, all in front. And then when, but when he moved, he just moved went to the front easy, made the final. And it actually bit him in the ass at that race. He, he ended up being beat by, uh, uh, I think it was John Jefferson in the, in the mile in, in the mile, they ran mm. like a one twenty. they won it, ran a one twenty last 600 to, Holy to finish God. it off. But he got, he got beat by John just, just, just the line. Ooh. 